Hey folks, it's been a while. Today we're going to be taking another look at the R9 285 2GB and seeing how the Tonga GPU actually stacks up against the fanboy's favourite, the definition of fine wine technology, the Tahiti XT GPU found in the card that the 285 was expected to replace, the R9 280X. Now we know that the newer Tonga GPU is certainly more efficient, having a TDP of 190 watts compared with 250 watts on the 280X, but with 1792 shading units, 112 texture mapping units and 32 ROPs instead of the full 2048-128-36 configuration you get with the full fat Tahiti chip, will the refined GCN architecture be able to make up for that difference? And then there's also the memory differences to throw into the mix. The R9 280X and the HD7900 series before it supported a plentiful 3GB of GDDR5 memory on a 384-bit memory bus, giving us a total memory band with a 288GB per second. The 285 on the other hand has to make do with 2GB of memory on a 256-bit bus, meaning a memory bandwidth of 176GB per second. So let's put these two head to head and see if it's a case of the 285 being a young pretender or if it was really the true heir to the throne. We're going to be running these tests today on the budget AM4 test bench which consists of a Ryzen 5 1400 with 4 cores and 8 threads, 8GB of DDR4 3000 memory and we've locked the CPU core clock speed to 3.7GHz on all 4 cores. The R9 285 was tested at a stock configuration and also overclocked to 1100 MHz on the core and 1500 MHz on the VRAM. The 280X comes fresh out of the factory with a core clock speed of 1000 MHz and a memory speed of 1500 MHz. We could push a little further on the core clock through with this sample, matching the overclocked 285's core clock speed of 1.1 GHz to give us a comparable clock for clock performance test. So without further ado, let's kick things off with the Rise of the Tomb Raider on the high preset with FXAA enabled. Now this returned a good experience, with the saturation of that 2GB frame buffer on the 285 not being too much of a problem. At stock speeds, both the 280X and the 285 returned around 60fps on average, with the 1% lows being about 40 with both cards set at 1100MHz on the core and 1500MHz on the VRAM, the R9 285 did actually pull ahead slightly here, with a single frame increase on the 1% lows and 5fps increase on the average frame rate. Dropping the detail setting down to the medium preset, seeing the R9 280X offer up the better experience at stock clocks with higher 1% lows, despite being a couple of frames behind on the averages. And when overclocked to the average frame rate on the R9 285, it hit nearly 80 FPS, while the R9 280X returned 72. Interestingly, though, both these cards returned identical 1% low results, and in game, especially if you're using a 60Hz monitor, you would be hard pressed to tell the difference between these cards. Hope County now in Far Cry 5, and this proves to be a very interesting test. At all settings at 1080p in the in game menu, it tells you that you're going to be using more than 2GB of video memory. Despite that, the 285 returns playable results. When putting it up against the 280X though, we can start to see the benefit of having more video memory. At the high preset with TAA enabled, the 285 returned around 44 FPS on average, with the 1% lows coming in at 36. Overclocking the 285, seen a mild jump up to 49 FPS on average and 41 on the 1% lows. The R9 280X, however, absolutely blitzes through, regardless of being overclocked or not, with that 100 MHz boost to the core clock speed only adding a single frame to the averages, which were already hugely impressive at 60 FPS, with the 1% lows being over 50. 50 FPS. Trying to ease some of the memory strain on the 285 by dropping down to the medium preset, it did help a little, but even at the medium preset, the 285 couldn't match the results of the 280X, even when the 280X was running at high, which meant, yes you've guessed it, the 280X run away with it again at these settings, with averages in the upper 60s and the 1% lows even passing the 60 FPS mark, and that's a pretty incredible achievement on a 2018 game for a card originally released in December of 2011. Crisis 3 still proves to be a good test for older AMD GPUs, but unfortunately for the R9 285, the 280X again takes it to school here. At stock clocks at the medium preset with FXAA enabled, the 285 returned an average of 65 FPS, and the 1% lows were over 40. 
overclock the averages jumped up to nearly 70 and the 1% lows into the mid 40s. The 280X on the other hand, even its stock clocks, returned 1% lows as 60 FPS. Increasing to the high preset, the overclocked R9 285 managed about 60 FPS on average, with the 1% lows being above 30 FPS. But again, it's the 280X that's easily the faster card here, averaging above 60 FPS with the overclocked 1% lows hitting 40. Easing the pressure on the GPU for a moment with Fortnite at 1080p on the high preset, and it was no problem for either of these cards really. At stop clocks, the R9 285 returned over 60 FPS on average, while the 1% lows were in the low 40s. Overclocking the R9 285 it yielded around about a 10% increase, which is pretty good. And the 280X, surprisingly here, fell behind the 285 in this test, only by a few frames per second, but it was a notable and rare win for the Tonga chip. Finally, Prey, and the R9 285, even its stock clocks, was presenting no problems here, with the averages being almost 80 FPS and the 1% lows being a respectable 45. Overclocking did actually help the 285 here, with the average frame rate jumping up to 90 FPS and ensuring a really smooth gameplay experience. Unfortunately, though, playing through the exact same path on the R9 280X, it overshadowed the 285's impressive results and offered up around a 10% improvement across the board, with averages hitting 100 FPS, even at stock clocks, and the 1% lows staying above 60 FPS, even without the overclock. So, Tahiti or Tonga? Well, in the case of this test, it's a bit of a strange one. We can see that clock for clock in games that don't really punish the lower amount of VRAM, the Tonga GPU can actually be faster than the Tahiti. Rise of the Tomb Raider shows that even with the lower core count, the new architecture did make notable improvements in terms of power and processing, likewise in Fortnite. But in 2018, where a lot of games will use 2GB of VRAM if you let them, that extra gig in the 280X makes a lot more sense. And in games like Far Cry 5, you can see the difference that a higher core configuration, as well as not having to swap between VRAM and System RAM, can make. The aggregate average results here shows that when both cars were clocked at 1100MHz on the core and 1500MHz on the memory, the R9 280X was on average about 7.5% faster, and it also returned 1% low scores, around 15% higher. Now the 285 does have its place, those who want to use newer technologies like FreeSync for example, will want to go with the Tonga GPU as Tahiti cards don't support it, and it's also more power efficient which means you might want to get by with a cheaper PSU. And if all you do is play Fortnite then it would be the more logical choice. But for me the 280X is still king of the hill, with that memory bus and that extra gig of VRAM. Still relevant in 2018 despite the GPU originally surfacing in 2011 is some achievement indeed, and it completely deserves its fine wine tag. Tonga didn't die lying down though, it hit the gym over the summer, found a few more cores and came back renamed Antigua a year following its release. Like in this card here, the R9 380X, offering the same core configuration as the 280X but rocking 4GB of VRAM instead of 2, all in that refreshed GCN architecture. But that's a video for another time. From me, Tonga and Tahiti. All I'll say is thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, consider liking, sharing and subscribing if you've not done so already, and I'll see you very soon in the comment section down below, and in the next video.